so that we can share this with people and some colleagues are going to dip in and out um, and some are not going to make it they're still in school so if we have the recording we can share that as widely as possible because the intention of these um, sessions to most of you that know me some of you might not know me but every time I do a zoom session like this um, on behalf of Dolan it is always about raising awareness and getting a as wide a reach as possible, working with as many teachers and education professionals as possible. COVID has created this amazing opportunity for this online platform, and we've had huge success this year. So most of you on the screen, I think, know me, but for those of you that are watching this later, I'm Sharon, and I'm the Education Officer for Doll and Cymru, and we're a teeny tiny NGO that's been linked with Lesotho for over 35 years. And we work really well hand in hand with lots of teachers, predominantly in Tabatseka, Kuting and Maseru at the moment. But we do have past connections with all the districts in Lesotho. Um, and through our Connecting Classrooms project, we work with the majority of districts. So as I said, with this online platform, we can um, reach as many people as possible. Now, I'm gonna share my slides and I'm gonna just give you an introduction to today's conference. Um, and then I'm gonna go through a little bit of housekeeping as well. I have muted everybody. If um, after each speaker, if, if, if you want to ask some questions, you can use the chat, which you should be able to see. If you're on your phone, it is a little bit trickier. Um, but you can go, you can swipe across and usually you can find the option for chat. If not, you can use our WhatsApp group. And I'm just pasting that in, in the chat on Zoom, okay? If you click on that, it will take you to a WhatsApp group, which is our wellbeing WhatsApp. Most of you are in it. I know I recognize most of your names, but for those of you that are not, that might be the easier way to give some feedback or ask any questions today, okay? So those are your two options. I'm gonna try and keep you all as muted as possible. Um, but like I said, if you've got audio problems, go out and come back in. I've got Paul and Mandy, who are our chair and other education officer in the room with us, so they can help with any um, facilitation. I'm gonna put you as a co-host, Mandy, if that's okay. Um, Oh, I can only do one co-host. Okay, never mind. Um, if you can, you keep an eye on the chat man for me, please. Lovely, thank you. Okay, right. So I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to get cracking. We got lots of exciting um, things to share with you today. We got a really good um, set of speakers, all from Lesotho. You're just going to have to listen to me to begin with. Um, but for most of you, you should know, hopefully, that yesterday was World Mental Health Day. And so celebrated across the world is this international day of recognition where we really want to try and raise awareness. Can I just double check? Everyone can see my screen there. Paul, can you see it? Yep. OK, fab. So it is an international day of awareness all around the world that is about Again, having that conversation and making it an important part of our conversation and world that it is okay. There's, there should be no stigma. If there's something that you're struggling with, if somebody you know has got a mental health concern, that it's not something to be ignored. And so raising awareness on these global days is important. But every day, it should be part of the conversation. And that's where our, us having a, another wellbeing conference is about making sure that it is part of your teaching and learning. It's not something that you leave to somebody else. And what hopefully you will find at the end of today's conference, that is all about partnership working and working with other people to make sure that we're all part of this conversation and trying to help everybody that we can. And as you can see, the little picture on my slide there is mental health care for all. Let's make it a reality. There's a little video I want to share with you from the World Health Organization just to give you a bit of a summary. So it takes two minutes, two seconds.
our lockdowns as we've had have really impacted on my anxiety and well-being. It made me worried a lot what about my well-being, uh, my health. Oops, sorry, I was just jumped. And my future, my head was heavy. Um, I couldn't talk, or I couldn't say what was wrong. Como paciente de Parkinson, los síntomas han aumentado en este último año y medio. También ha tenido que ver con el encierro propio de la pandemia. Ah, me already pele se depressed thi, aur uspe aur depression aate jada to, to I just fell into a pit, and I couldn't get out of it. So that is when I felt that I should get this check. I reached out to a friend who also a counselor for youth time for mental health, and he able to give me counseling sessions. When I reached out to a psychologist, that was when I was diagnosed with um, clinical depression. I could give a name to what was wrong, I was able to share with, with family members, and then everyone tried their possible best to be there for me. Well, uh, just share counselor share friends share slowly, मतलब वो मुझे ऐसा महसूस होने लगा कि हां मेरी गलती तो थी नहीं थेरेपी हैज हेल्प मी टू कम थ्रू दिस रियली डार्क टाइम देयर इज नो वर्ड्स फॉर मी टू डिस्क्राइब ऑनेस्टली द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ इट बिकॉज़ आई थिंक इट रियली सेव माय लाइफ इट हेल्प मी कोप विद माय एंजाइटी हेल्प मी विद माय डिप्रेशन दैट लेड मी इनटू अ सेफर एंड अ पीसफुल स्टेट ऑफ माइंड I think what I would love to see is where is a community, uh, a place where we treat uh, mental health, same way we treat every other form of health. It's important that los países con economías más golpeadas tengan apoyos de países con economías más fuertes, porque las enfermedades no distinguen fronteras. Counselors should be there in schools and in institutions. I want to speak truth to power. And say, listen to us. I'm hoping that the world is going to have a different view of mental illness. Okay. Now, something that we need to be quite open about from the get-go is that there are limited services in Lesotho and many other countries in the global south that are struggling to prioritize finances. But where we come together as a group of education professionals is where we can work on things that focus on skills and resilience and talking, things that can be done in school that are going to be building together that sense of community so that we can talk about things. And as you saw in that video, you know, they were, people from around the world that were able to articulate what they felt. Many young people can't do that. So we need to give them different ways of exploring their own feelings, their own emotions, their difficulties. And so hopefully today we will go through a few examples of that. Now, I, this is something we shared in our last conference, which came out of our community um, collaboration was Wellbeing Wednesdays. And it's not just ours, it does belong to lots of people around the world. Um, it just so happened to fit for us. And some schools that we work with have started connecting with their schools in Wales to look at the five ways to wellbeing, which is an approach, particularly for schools to start making sure that wellbeing is on the agenda. Okay, so we will be talking about examples today that that give this and they do this i've got people trying to get in the meeting i don't know um paul is there anybody in the waiting room there only that my phone is going a little bit crazy but i'm going to carry on um go on no nope, um, the waiting room that i can see okay i think there's just some network challenges okay once our first presentation starts i can start responding to some people um, but the five ways to well-being, keep it the language simple for children. And this is where some of you last time we had our conference was asking, well, what's the difference between mental health and well-being? And I've just put up a simple WHO definition there where mental health is a state of well-being, where we, I can't see the slide anymore, but where individuals um, work on their own abilities to cope with normal stresses of life and can work productively and can make a contribution in, 
in in this positive sense, mental health is the foundation for individual well-being and the effective functioning of a community. So that your well-being is your happiness, your day-to-day -day ability to cope with difficulties. And goodness knows we've had so many difficulties over the past year. So the five ways approach are just, again, a way to get children to remember, get teachers to remember, and start to build things into school policies and routines where everyone starts to take notice, think of the good things, and take notice when people are happy, celebrate those moments of connection, make sure that we can talk and connect, that we have a language, keep learning, you're all here today to keep learning, which is wonderful, being active is so important for adults and children, exercise is absolutely key, and give in your time and that's what you're doing now you're giving us our time but each of you that have worked with us this year already that have been doing well-being clubs in their schools you're giving time to your learners to do some non-formal education have a conversation read a book do some drawings those moments are so important for those learners well-being so let's crack on with our speakers and our agenda so that we can oops I'm going to come back to this one later. This is just a little summary um, of what we did, what we've been, what we've done since April. Um, but what we're going to have this afternoon, we're going to have um, May Molapo talk about transitions, which as we're coming now to the end of the school year, it's really, really important that we can support those grade sevens going into year eight, um, grade eight rather. We're going to have um, Mehmet Khani talk about the Tree of Life toolkit, which is a really practical way of working with learners to build resilient skills. And she's from Repsi. We've got some nice little clips from different schools that we've worked with over the year. We've got Tembi from um, Hub Marija to talk about the non-formal education work they've been doing with their skills and soup sessions. And we've got the director of Vision Street, Lebo Hang, who's going to talk to us about the radio shows that we, we did earlier this year. And we've got some more success stories to show. So it's action packed. It is already 20 past, so we're going to get cracking. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing for a second, just to double check who's in the room. Um, Memo Lapo, are you here? Just so that I know if you're around to do any questions after your presentation. Let's have a quick look. There we yes, go. Good morning. I'm here. Hello, May. So I'll play your slides if that's okay, and then we'll do question and answer afterwards. That's no, fine. Great. Okay. All right. Welcome, May. I know we've had a few issues with people joining, but I'll I'll share my screen now and go back to the video. Okay. Thank you. What kind of music If you can mute yourself there, May, and then I'm going to go to the next slide. There we go. So I've already introduced you. You saw briefly May on the camera there, um, and she's going to introduce herself now with her slideshow. School transitions and well-being. This is presented by Penny Lab coordinator. Lena can well first opportunity to Mr. Education and Training. The unit has three officers, namely the coordinator. HR and AIDS counselor and assistant HR and counselor. The service is provided in the unit. We manage the Ministry of Education and Training Adolescent Program, facilitate counseling sessions for teachers, learners, and sector employees, provide care and support services, facilitate training sessions for teachers on universal precautions and occupational safety coordinate health-related interventions implemented by partners and ministries in schools, provide psychosocial support and counseling and the HTS package, facilitate and participate in training of learners in study skills in collaboration with the Principal Award Scheme. Coordinate support the unit activities, the Lesotho School Health and Nutrition Policy, the Lesotho Education Sector and HIV AIDS Policy, the Lesotho Education Act 2010, child friendly school standards, extracurricular risk reduction and avoidance handbook for youth, adolescent information handbook, which is in draft form, school related gender based violence manual, which is also still in draft form. Transition is about change for children, adolescents, and young people who attend school. 
it is a change from their roles as learners to being adults. All young people who attend and eventually leave school go through some kind of a transition. For some, the transition from school life to adult life is smooth, while some find the transition more difficult. Learners with disabilities are at risk of being unable to attend college or university and of being unable or uninvolved in the life of their communities. Most learners make many transitions within their school lives. They do so when they begin early childhood education and care services, start school, change year levels within a school, transfer from one school to another, shift from one primary school to intermediate school and to secondary school, move from secondary school to tertiary education, then employment. For many school-going children and adolescents, the transition from primary to secondary high school is one of the most difficult transitions in this education career. When learners change class within or between schools, they frequently have mixed feelings about the transition. They look forward to secondary school, but also may have reservations. Poor school and peer transitions can have negative short or long term consequences on mental health especially where it is accompanied by several changes and challenges. Where they must adjust to new surroundings, this we're referring to learners, where they become, they must become familiar with new teachers and peers, where they have to learn new ways of working and making sense of the rules and routines that operate in their classrooms. While learners are navigating the formal school environment, they're also trying to adjust to the social changes and challenges while adjusting to their changing school and classes. The transition to secondary and high school often coincides with the important social, emotional, and physiological changes in their lives, specifically adolescents. Learners need to make positive adjustments to their new school and classes so that their well being is maintained and their learning is coherent and continuous. While the changes that learners may experience during a transition are numerous, the following are a few representative examples. School facilities. Sometimes the school has a very big yard and learners have to find a way around the school yard. Academic expectations. Academically, the expectations of a secondary school are much higher than expectations of a primary school. So it takes time for the learner to adjust. Class schedules. Learners are used to having a class that they have one teacher at a time, but with the secondary or high school, they might have several teachers with different uh, lessons in a day, different teachers. At primary level, they had only one teacher, whereas now at secondary or high school, now they have different teachers coming in, and this the learner has to get accustomed to. Increased independence, peer groups, family involvement. Unsettled transition behaviors could be attributed to disruptions of social networks, both with teachers and with peers, less individual attention from teachers at secondary school because of the way secondary schools are organized, making personalized relationships between teachers and learners more difficult to achieve. Learners testing their boundaries as pair adjusting to the new school and growth. Ad in identifiable negative impacts on the learner achievement, inappropriate classroom placements of some learners in relation to their learning and or social needs, diminishing the learner's self, self concept and ability to cope well, less responsive teacher pedagogy leading to learner disinterest and lack of engagement, peer pressure from the other learners resulting in skipping classes because they said to do well in academic work, smoking, drinking, using drugs, and general mis misbehavior. Successful transitions. Teachers at both primary and secondary schools have important roles to play in supporting oh, the of oh, all learners. Yeah. Primary schools are responsible for preparing learners academically and socially for secondary schools and sharing with them. I'll just stop. Can everyone make sure they're muted, please? When you come in, if you can just make sure you've got mute on. Thank you. Elena, families in the receiving school, the values and ethical orientation or culture within a secondary school is fundamental to how well it 
it welcomes and supports the incoming new learners. Learners' expectations about secondary school and the experiences often differ. As part of that transition processes, schools should explore with learners the expectations they have of their new schools and consider how this can be acknowledged. Learners who are most vulnerable include those with special educational needs and those from low-income families. These learners and some with poor self-esteem or few friends often require specific structures or approaches that are tailored to their individual circumstances. Learners that are at risk of not successfully transitioning to secondary school are learners with lower abilities, low self-image or poor self-esteem, learners who have a history of schooling that undermines a positive sense of themselves as learners, learners that, are, that some teachers find it difficult to relate to and establish positive learning relationships, learners that may need particular health and support strategies to be working before they can become fully engaged in schooling, factors outside of the school that can impact on their engagement with school. Learners need to make a positive adjustment to their new school and classes so that their well-being is maintained and their learning is coherent and continuous. Preparing learners academically and socially for secondary schools, sharing information with the learner, orientation sessions for learners to share information on the values, ethical orientation or culture within a secondary school, exploring with learners the expectations they have of their new schools and consider how this can be acknowledged, supporting vulnerable learners, those with lower abilities and low self-image or poor self-esteem, the relationships and connectedness learners have with their peers, teachers and the school are of critical importance to learners, ability to do well at school. Those are strongly linked to learners' motivation, especially an attendance that in turn impacts on the academic achievement and learners' well-being. The transition to secondary school is more complex than just developing orientation processes for learners to become familiar with the school's environment, personnel and programs. The time learners take to transition varies for individual learners and is dependent on how long they take to feel they are included and are in. Relationships with and between teachers and learners are critical in the transition process. Relationships and communication with parents and group groups within the community are also important during transition. Galiwa, thank you. From the Mountain Kingdom. Thank you, May Malapo. Where are you? If you could um, unmute, unmute and pop your camera on for me, um, just so we can shine a little bit of light over for that an amazing presentation <laughs> with a lot of information. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm here. Um, so I'm not sure if we've got any questions. Please, hopefully, everybody managed to hear all of that if you if you didn't then all of this will be available to you later but but may manage to summarize some really really important um issues and effects of bad transition between schools so i, I just have a question to get started we've got a little bit of time with each speaker um for any questions so please do pop it in the chat or unmute when we when we have a chance but Yes, May, I was just wondering, you know, for me, I always think how, what, what does success look like? So the relationship between the high school and the primary school, um, how, how does that succeed? Who needs to be talking? Does, is there needing to just be the principals or are we looking at a transition team of teachers? What would, um, what would you say you've seen that works? Oh, okay. Thank you, Sharon. Um, it's not about the principal, it's not about uh, the teachers per se. It, uh, is, am I loud enough? Yes, yeah. Okay. You know, what happens is transition starts as early as kindergarten. When the learner or a child leaves home, that poor child needs to be made aware that now you're moving to a place where there are orders and rules. Don't speak when I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. do this at a certain time and all that. That's where transition starts. Now, when they're in primary, they need to be uh, put to a level where they understand moving from grade one to grade two or class one to class two. You know, they're being taught by different teachers. Some, some of us are loud. Some of us speak softly. 
So you need when Elena when learners leave your class and they're transitioning to the next class, that's where transition should take place mm -hmm. because they're going to meet with different teachers with different characteristics and character traits and who, whose demands are different. Mm -hmm. So you need to make them aware. Even the workload increases as they go to the next class. So if they are not prepared, they get stressed, trying to adjust to the workload and the noise, and it gets worse when they get to high school or secondary, because then, you know, there will be maybe four teachers coming into a classroom after every 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. The child is trying to digest all this. What's happening? What? Why is this? Miss mm -hmm. has left and the next one is coming in. This one is loud. This one is speaking in English and I, I don't understand a thing. So transition needs its, its, its uh, ongoing process mm -hmm. that we need to discuss all the time. Even within the same school setting, teachers need to say who, who's a slow learner, who's struggling, how do we have this child moving from one class to another. So if it's done perfectly, or at least if we try to, to have uh, a say in it, that's going to impact positively on the learner's learning. Mm -hmm. So the learners also get stressed. You know, when you go to secondary, you have to go to uh, public transport to go to school. You have this load of books, and then there are these things called assignments, where you read books. And if you are not prepared that these are coming your way, then you, you, you'll take time. By the time you are just, then academically, the school year is gone. Mm -hmm. So this needs to be done by every teacher. We, we are not supposed to wait for when they're in grade seven or standard seven. We need to do it all the time. All the because time. transitioning, even when they leave uh, school and go to tertiary, we still need to do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. That, you know, it, it's about um, being transparent with the learners. And it's also that the teachers are taking responsibility for managing behaviour change. And I think that is something that everybody hopefully in this Zoom room is open to because they really feel for the gap in learning that their learners have experienced and they really feel for their, now their next steps. And so you're right, I, I love that idea that transition starts right from the beginning and it's about good communication, it's about transparency and giving everybody, not just the children, but the teachers the, the skills to manage change because we all need to be able to do that without getting upset and too stressed. And we need to be as a team to do that, don't we? Okay, is there any questions there? I'm just gonna quickly check the chat. Um, if anybody wants to unmute or put your hand up if you know how to do the reactions on Zoom um, before we move on to our next speaker. This is where people are shy. You could always ask a question later. If you're too shy to speak now, you might need to warm up. <laughs> okay, I think we we will move on to the next one. May, thank you very much for that. I hope you can stay to, to hear from the other people too. Thank you everybody for listening and thank you, Sharon. Thank you very much. Thank you, May. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen, folks. I'm gonna go back to the slideshow. Oh, hang on, Mr. Mark Paul Myers, you want to quickly ask your question? No, I was just clapping for the last oh. presentation. <laughs> oh, I can see it's a clap, yeah, I'm going to clap in, excellent, thank you. <laughs> Please take a look at your screen, if you can work out your um, reactions, you can clap and put your hand up and put your thumbs up. Okay, wonderful, right, I'm going to move on. All right. So next up, we have. Oh, hang on. We're going backwards. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to say a special thank you. I'm not sure if uh, Mayor Matakani is here, but she stepped in today at the last minute to send us her presentation. Um, and I want to just make this really clear that after the presentation, I will be sending out the links that we. Um, are using today and there is a toolkit so there's a pdf from repsi um with all of this on um for you to be able to go through and i'm really really pleased that we were able to have matakani talk to us about this toolkit because i think looking at working with your students 
um, in wellbeing clubs or even class or one-to-one, -one, this is a really, really good tool for you to use. But I'm going to hand over to our Repsi trainer rather than explain it myself. Good morning, everyone. My name is Matagani El Sinkari, and I'm going to present to you about the Tree of Life as a tool used in the Psychosocial Support Initiative. Uh, before I start, I'd like to highlight on, on what psychosocial support means in this context. The psychosocial support it describes a continuum of care and support that addresses social, emotional, and psychological problems mm -hmm. in order to preserve the well-being of individuals, their families, and communities. And this type of support can be provided within family by other persons close to that individual or by the services provided to the community by the community themselves, government or civil society organizations. That is the, the most important area which I think is best that I present to us before going into what the tree of life is. So coming to the tree of life itself, like I have said, it is a tool that is among those tools that are used in the psychosocial support initiative to address issues that affect people in their daily lives. It is a tool for resilience. It is used to connect people through telling a story of one's life to their loved ones, their colleagues, friends, and communities at different levels. And why this tool? This is mainly to create a platform to bring together a diverse group of community members. We have people ranging from young children to adults living in different types of adversities. And having this tool in place and uh, allowing them to share their life stories through so it, it actually helps them to feel connected to their fellow uh, community members, uh, their fellow children, their fellow colleagues, and everyone involved in their lifetime. And the beneficiaries to this, like I have highlighted, that we are dealing with a group of uh, people from different, different backgrounds. We have children, we have caregivers, we have um, many people that teachers, nurses, police officers, mm -hmm. everyone involved is actually mm -hmm. a beneficiary to this. And when we, we move closely into what it actually entails, we, we use the methodology that allows everyone who is participating to take part and voluntarily share their life story with us. We, we, we use the tree of life also to allow people to go down memory lane, to see those areas, those parts of their lives, which they would have otherwise ignored or even, you know, like uh, never, never realized, never recognized or appreciated that they experienced them and they have made them what they are today. So the tree of life, as I have said, it actually uses the, the, the tree and its part to actually explain different aspects of one's life. So when we look at the tree as it is, we know that we know how it's planted. We look at different parts of a tree, which I have highlighted that they are actually uh, compared. They are actually compared to the different aspects of one's life. So we have the soil where we plant the tree. We have the roots. There is the trunk. There are branches. We have leaves. We have buds. We have the fruits of a tree. So this is how every participant is asked to look at the tree as it actually appears in one's life. So going through the tree quickly, I will start with the, the soil. When we discuss the soil, 
we will see that the soil is about one's background, the culture, the country, where one was born at and, and how they, they grew up and, and how did that affect them as children. For instance, we I may have been born in another country and yet I am a Musutu child. And I may have grown up in, in another country, and yet I am a Lesotho child. So we, we, we normally take people through that to realize those that part of their life where things started. So they are allowed to speak up, to say their views, their emotions, to share with their fellow uh, participants how that has affected them as children. And then we, we come to the roots. The roots are actually about the family and friends. And it's, a, it's all about one's heritage, like one's history. Uh, like if you are of the family of Johnson, then you know you are a Johnson. That is how we, we, we deal with, with the rules. That is the aspect of life that we look into. That, okay, uh, even though I was born in, in, in my country, and I know that I belong to that country, I lived with my auntie in another country. I was raised by those people, and then I, I copied their culture, I adapted to it, and I... Make sure everyone's muted, please. Thank you. Started practicing what they did there, mainly because I I was actually in the and as one of the children. So I may I might have missed what my whole family was actually doing or how my other siblings have been socialized. Sorry, guys. And Tate, is it well? Can you press mute on your device, please? Oh, oh. 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 There we go. One of the hosts, just keep an eye uh, on the mute, please. Thank you. Molded. And then I have to say, how has that affected me? Uh, it might affect me positively or negatively. So we allow participants to go deep into that and, and look around and take note of all things that happened during that time and say how that has actually affected them. Then we come to the trunk. The trunk, we, as we all know, the trunk of a tree is the strongest part. Even if the wind blows from any direction, it is very rare that you will see the trunk being torn apart. It, it will actually, it would rather, you know, be uprooted as a whole tree, but the trunk will remain intact. So that is the, the strongest point of one's life. That is another aspect that we allow our participants to look into. So they, they look at that and take note of how strong they have become. And they highlight certain areas in their life, like, for instance, if a child gets to lose both parents at an early age, and then he or she will share with us how he managed to get out of that trauma, to come out of it, and how they have actually managed to prevail over that situation. So that marks the trunk when we look at the tree. That is what the trunk of the tree addresses, the strongest part of one's life, the strongest aspect of one's life. So we allow them to, to go deep into that. And then as they throw their trees, then they are able to say, under this, I was able to overcome this, I subdued this, I did this, that's why I came out strong. Then we come to the branches of a tree. The branches of a tree represent other parts of your life, like uh, work, school, education, friends, you know, those aspects of our lives. It actually, uh, it, it, it highlights... Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys, that was my mistake. Let me just get back to it. Mm. 
Apologies. That certain areas in their life, like for instance, if a child gets to lose both parents at an early age, and then he or she will share with us how he managed to get out of that trauma, to come out of it, and how they have actually managed to prevail over that situation. So that marks the trunk when we look at the tree. That is what the trunk of the tree addresses, the strongest part of one's life, the strongest aspect of one's life. So we allow them to, to go deep into that. And then as they throw their trees, then they are able to say, under this, I was able to overcome this, I subdued this, I did this, that's why I came out strong. Then we come to the branches of a tree. The branches of a tree represent other parts of your life, like uh, work, school, education, friends, you know, those aspects of our lives. It actually, uh, it, it, it highlights on the, on the goals and dreams, aspirations not dreams, I'm sorry, aspirations of one's life. And then we say, uh, what were your goals? And maybe I, 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 I was willing and I was just striving and fighting hard because my plan, my goal was to become a teacher. So those are the goals. Some of us would want to be uh, great parents, farmers, you know, journalists, all areas of your life where you say this is where i want to reach so that is that aspect itself is our trust under branches of a tree because our lives usually have different branches and so when they come to that then the branches would highlight those goals uh, in, in one's life and so we, we we ask them to tell us a little about each of those branches, which are the goals and aspirations. Then we come to the lips. And for everyone, when we, we live, there's always that person or that skill, you know, that steps as a support system. There's always something that gives you support that propels you to achieve your goals. So this is addressed under lips. Uh, children have grown up under very uh, uh, serious conditions, you know, they, they have actually been marginalized, they have actually faced drama and all kinds of uh, negative things that life has actually thrown to them. But then there's this support system. Support system could be parents, neighbors, church, you know, the NGOs, like we have orphanages, we have what, where children are actually helped. That type of assistance, we, 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 we expect our people when we train them to take note of those. And they would say that from childhood up to where they are, if it's in an adult uh, conversation session, then they will say that there are people who have played a very important role in their lives. And you actually hear one saying, hey, had it not been because of my parents, had it not been because of my neighbors, my church, my the, the community as a whole, had it not been because of my government, I wouldn't be where I am today. So that aspect itself falls under the leaves. The leaves uh, serves as uh, uh, the same purpose that the leaves serves under a tree. It, the leaves uh, provides that support for the tree. So in the same manner with us, the people who are actually always in, their, in our midst, always interceding for us, those people are our support system. So even here, we expect the, the participants to tell us about such uh, people. Then we come to the bugs. The bugs are the challenges, and they normally challenge our development as a way of hindering our success. And 
we, we look at that and we want them to focus and say, yeah, I know I came across this. And, and then they, they make the list what other challenges they had. You know, we have a loss, a loss of parents, loss of siblings, relatives, friends, neighbors, you know, everything that people have actually um, faced in life as a negative uh, factor, then we say those are the bugs of a tree. They are trust under the bugs of a tree. And then we come to the last stage, which are the fruits. The fruit is for the achievement one has made in one's life. So definitely it's about... Good morning, everyone. Sorry, that's my mistake again. I don't know what I've done there. Apologies. Let me just find where we were. Our fellow uh, colleagues to their fellow uh, neighbors, uh, countrymen, and everyone that is involved in this. And before I, I go off, this uh, tool can be used. Sorry, I'm having a few technical problems, guys. Just bear with me, I'm going to go back a step there because we just missed what we were talking about with the fruits. Let me just find the spot. Useful for the teachers. We use it to address different aspects of one's life. And yes, this is, uh, this is mainly to bring people into the, the notion of accepting one another, the notion of being deeply connected, as I have highlighted, to their fellow uh, colleagues, to their fellow uh, neighbors, uh, countrymen, and anyone that is involved in this. And before I, I go off, this uh, tool can be used for both children and adult conversations. This is why we use it in trainings, in community trainings, like I have said. And it's very good when used for, for, for children. And it is very useful for the teachers, for the nurses, all, all the secondary caregivers, the, the community monitors, nurses, police officers, everyone who is involved in the lives of, of children. This tool is very useful because at the end of it all, after such um, initiatives, then you will start seeing difference. Uh, I'd like to also um, uh, inform you that, that I have used it many a times and more recently, I have used it as a person who is also hands on taking care of many, many children in one organization, in one organization where I, I am actually providing this for the children that have been badly affected and it works wonders. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Matakani, are you there? Can you? Um, and mute and put your camera on if you can. I'm hoping you can fill the gap that I just missed. I'm so sorry. I just lost that tiny little bit about the fruits. So Matakani, are you there? If you can tap your screen and unmute, that would be wonderful. I know she was in, but she might have fallen back out. Um, apologies there. Um, oh, she's just coming back in. There we go. Oh, there we go. Matakani, where if you unmute, Matakani, please. There we go. Oh, your audio is not very good, I'm afraid. It's not very good, I'm afraid. Sorry, Mayor. So what, what I will say, if anyone has any questions at the moment, to put it in the chat. And um, I'll make sure that Matakani joins our wellbeing WhatsApp group so she can she can respond to anything there. Um, it's a very quick introduction and she does an amazing job. Like I said, it's that it was last minute she came in to speak. And 
it is such a useful tool. It makes me um, quite excited as I found out of it by chance. And this is the point of these networks. You know, we, we find information, we get um, good practice, we find out things from each other, and we don't keep them to ourselves. We want to give them to other people because if it works, let's do it. And I, and I see that this Tree of Life Toolkit is an activity for children in your care that really need to build those self-resilient skills. They need to understand their story. They need to understand how they can empower themselves. This is a really good way. You're not in a position in school to just sit down and have a counseling session but this activity starts to open up some of those doorways that really do need to be opened. So thank you, Mayor, for doing that. Um, let's follow up with questions in the chat later on and after the conference as well. Um, we're doing good for time at the moment, folks. Um, so I'll move on to the next one and hope that my technological skills don't get ruined. I apologize for that. Um, but we're doing good. We've got lots of you still here. Lots of you are in and out. Don't lose heart. That's just what happens. Um, but I am recording. So anything you miss, you can pick up later on. OK, let me go on to my next speaker. OK, a little bit of success. I'm not sure if Sister Dimpo is with us, um, but I've got a little um audio from her and a video from her learners she's been an active member of our well-being group since april um, and doing some wonderful things in mount royal primary so i wanted to share that with everybody uh, afternoon since we are an inclusive school and so after british courses we implemented the following one a poster which says ours is a free barrier environment. Secondly, every Thursday is a sign language day, which means that teaching is conducted in sign language from grade five up to grade seven. Yes, here and there we can explain in English and Sisutu. Thirdly, we have made or uh, informed the English club for both hearing and deaf. We meet on every Wednesday. Our main task is only reading. Lastly, all activities are done in English and sign language. Thank you. Okay, and over to some of the students from her school. It's well-being. Well-being is not just an absence of disease. It's more than that. It's a combination of personal, emotion, and mental, so, so, social health, life, life situation, happiness, happiness, how you feel about yourself. Pay attention to the present situation. COVID-19, what is it? COVID-19. Hunger. Hunger. Education. Education. Be physical, active, play with others, share jokes, take medication, connect with other people, learn new skills, learn new skills. showing, exactly, showing. Thank you. Oh, thank you. What a wonderful testament to understanding the five ways of well-being there from, from those learners. We've got lots of examples of their creativity on our YouTube channel. Um, please do check that out later if you can, because um, Sister has given us lots of examples for our monthly newsletter, which I'll talk to you about later as well. Thank you, Mount, Mount Royal Primary. Well -being. Well -being is not there we go okay right then i'm going to stop sharing for a second and just double check that tembi is here from the hub she's going to be talking about skills and soup um are you there my dear
This is why we have pre-records people, just in case people disappear out of the meeting. Tembi, are you there? She's yeah, there. I want her to, to disappear though. <laughs> you want to turn your screen off? No way. I'm going to make you speaker now. Okay, so you want, you're going to go, go live? Look, we've got an audience behind you as well, my dear. How about you play the record then? I'll just fill up other missing parts. Okay, okay, I'll do that, right. Yes. Just oh, bear so with me, I'll share my screen and play your audio, thank you. Tembi, if you, if you mute, so then we'll unmute you shortly, okay? Okay. Okay, all right. Now, I will urge everybody to follow the hub on social media because they have got some amazing work being done um, and they are live now with us with a group of teachers and other people in the background um, so please 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 follow them on Facebook or Twitter so you can keep up to date on their work but not only their work their messaging they've got some fantastic Susutu messaging that's important for your communities so so please do keep up to date with them so I'm going to play Tembi's audio and then we'll go over to her. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Temeile Mukhosi, and I'm happy to be with you today. I'm a professional counselor. I graduated from National University of Lesotho in 2019. Since then, I have been volunteering as a children counselor at Moja Arts Center. And that's where the hub recognized my work and chose me to be one of the one of the sub facilitators. At Art Center, I'm volunteering as an education manager. And at the hub, I'm volunteering as skills and soup facilitator. Within us education program, we share our art skills with children, encourage them to practice their own art skills and be able to learn new ones from other kids and from us as facilitators. And I provide one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions to those kids whom I identify as vulnerable or at risk. And also we have group counseling sessions with the rest of the kids and at the hub and the skills and soup program of course there's soup and skills that is kids learn a lot of things and they are able to have their meals at least once in a week because some of the kids struggle to even ha to have even a meal per day, but at least if they're part of skills and soup, they know that at least once a week, I'm gonna have a proper meal. A lot of things that we we teach or we learn with our children are those things that sometimes they are not taught at school, like social issues. Like social issues, coping with stress, positive interaction, like effects of COVID-19 on our social life, such things. So most of the times we have those topics, we encourage them to write, to read, because sometimes you find that a kid who is in grade three, they struggle to write their name then you'll be asking yourself, but their classmates know how to write better than them. Maybe they are not giving enough attention because of them, that, you know, like we have different kids and others are special and others have these learning disabilities or others, they just feel left out. They are, they are not given that attention that they need. But girls and soup, there are fewer kids. We take 20 kids per day. So we are able to 
to help to interact with all all the kids and we know we know them we know them we know how others need to interact and which topics do they prefer because some other kids you will just be surprised that they are in grade two but they are like 11 years but when you give them a piece of of paper to throw like they can throw so well you can even see that the the face lighting up because of the excitement and when we have like other days when we need to write they would even lie say they have forgotten their mm. book or their pen at home because they don't feel like that's how what they want to do so yeah skills and so give children that exposure to be or to do what they like rather than the the what the culture that one has to for one to be a genius they have to do well in their class like know how to write how to read but we have other kids who whom um the what the yeah the interest is on other things so informal education is even accommodative to them. For most of the kids um, coming to the hub for skills and soup, it's so therapeutic because it provides environment where they can interact with other kids, where they can express themselves, how they feel, how they can express their skills with other kids in a safe environment, like where they are listened to. Because, you know, here in Lesotho, I remember when I was growing up, when I would try to say something, I'll be excited and want to tell a story. Then my parents would just say, hey, so some kids like from there, from their childhood, they are now shy to express themselves or tell a story because since, since, from when, when they were they were growing up, they were told not to say much. Like parents make make it sound like it's not a good thing when a kid is trying to talk and be expressive. Or sometimes they would just tell them, hey, yakanga Then you ask yourself, how about you? I'm just here. I'm not even in, I'm not even disturbing you guys while you're talking. But then why do you have to, to kick me out and tell me to go play with other kids? And sometimes as parents, we are not even aware that <clears throat> the environment educates kids. So if you always kick them out, tell them to go play with other kids and don't have like uh don't nurture the relationship our relationship with them, they end up being what the society or the environment that they interact with wants them to be. Then later on, you'll be complaining, hey, 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 while you're not even aware, you didn't give yourself a chance to raise them up. They were raised by the society. They were raised by like the village. So. Yeah, kids find it very, very therapeutic to engage with others and to learn new skills, new things like current affairs, other things you could think about. Even, even politics, even religion, culture, they learn a lot of things from skills and soup in a way that accommodates their understanding, the way they see things, in the way that will help them make choices in the future. A lot of a lot of kids have improved their behavior since they have been attending skills and soup. Uh, 
they are able to accept themselves and others. They have, uh, and their confidence, their confidence has increased because some kids will feel like, ah, I'm coming from a very vulnerable family, so I can interact with kids who are coming from better families. They'll be shy. They, they would even be shy to say things, to answer even while they know the answer because they feel like I don't belong here. But now you see that they interact with others before judging themselves. And some of the teachers and parents have given us positive, positive feedback that their, their children have improved at school, even at home, because you don't only teach them about academical stuff, but how do they interact with others? How do they interact with their environment? As a facilitator, I also learn a lot from these kids because if you can just give, give them attention, show them that you are important, what you say is important, I hear you, I understand you, then you can be able to learn a lot. Maybe, yes, learn some skills from them and they can open your eyes. So these kids are very, very special. However, it's very challenging when you are working with kids from different environment, but it takes time to understand them and be able to appreciate them each as an individual. I, I run facilitate skills and soup alone. I have Ndate Tejani Malakani, who is a primary teacher at, at Hatolan. The detention is very special amongst most of the teachers. He's not like stereotyped. He, try, he tries new things. He, he cares for kids. He doesn't, he doesn't interact with kids just like, okay, I'm a teacher, I'm gonna teach them this and this but he's a parent. He also teaches them about like a lot of things. He, encouraged, he encourages them to, to be curious, to, yes, yes, to be curious, sorry. But I don't know what's happening around. So I really, really appreciate him and I learn a lot of things from him. Big absent at the Tejani. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody, thank you. I think I went extra mile, but if you have questions, please do ask. Or if uh, <laughs> anything is not clear, you can just raise a point. <clears throat> wow. Tembi, I don't know what to say. Um, you you speak so beautifully and so calmly um, about such important topics. I'm just going to put you on speaker view now, so we can see you in uh, in your location. Which actually, I'm not getting on with Zoom. I can see you, but I can't put you at the main part of the screen. Let me see. Can I? Can please? you see me? There we go. There we go. Thank you. That was yeah. a wonderful presentation. You covered so many important things that we've brought up today, but also what we've brought up in our previous work about building relationships and, and giving children just that space, that new creative space to become themselves and not be afraid to speak and it is a, it's a new kind of relationship for adults with young people in Lesotho. I think we all acknowledge that that is something new, but something necessary. We, you know, we are coming into a new normal and for young people to lead the way, they have to um, understand the world, definitely. So thank you for that. Um, there's a few comments in, in the chat there. Thank you, May, wonderful presentation. Um, is there 
Any questions anybody has for, for Tembi at the moment, please? Yes, me. Hello, me. Hello. Hello, me. Me pulani. Okay, me pulani. Yes, me. I want to ask you, um, you know what? Uh, teachers in the past, uh, yes, they, taught, they taught us uh, according to their own way. Uh, they were not teaching us to have uh, self confidence, to have certain skills. They were judging us according to our welfare, whether you are poor or rich. So that that uh, that uh, those skills that they have given to us, which were bad, now we are posing them to the learners that we are now teaching. So I want to know how we can be helped to change so that we teach these learners of today to be good people, to have self-esteem, to have better communication skills and be well improved in the skills that we're talking about now. Okay, uh, that's a very important point that uh, the, the system that the teachers used to teach you guys, you are now using it to teach kids today. And sometimes yes. it's very harsh on the kids because sometimes sometimes you realize that a kid is not a slow learner, but because of where they come from and the treatment that they get, they end up not performing well at school because they feel less of themselves. Yes. I think, I, I don't know, but there's no one concept that you could say, do this and do this. You have to bring up a lot of concepts so that you can improve the relationship between the teacher and the student and students and all other students. Because if we, we, we create a positive environment with our kids is when we are able to see who they could be and how they would love things to be. I, I don't suggest that we should be very permissive, but giving a kid some space to express how they would love things to be done, it, it makes work more lesser for you because now you know how to approach them, how they would love to, to learn things. That's how like sometimes informal education is very, very important. Also, I think teachers should keep on like trying to learn new things new stars, not because you are a teacher, you are qualified, you don't have to end there. You have to, to learn some what development skills, leadership skills, and you have to learn concept about children development. Am I audible, Mepulani? I had muted me, Pilani. Do you want to reply, me? Sorry, I just had to knock off your background noise. Me, Pilani, are you there? Uh, she might. Oh, no, she is there. Yeah, you answered the question, me, um, Tembi, beautifully. You're right. You know, it's not about being permissive. It's about creating new opportunities. Um, and, and something we have talked about with many of the teachers in this group previously is the idea of growth mindset and developing that yourself, um, which is allowing you to develop new ways of thinking, new ways of seeing the world, and also teaching that to your, your learners and enabling them to develop those skills needed for the 21st century. Um, I can see there's a few people with their hands up. We've got Sis Royo, who is our colleague from South Africa that works with the British Council. Did you want to say something for you? Yes, Sharon. I wanted to, Ulani has, has, has raised a very important uh, question there. How do we impact on learners and how do we move from our training? Uh, I, I think Tembi has answered the question perfectly well because it's more about now professional development. And one of the things that I would advise uh, Kulane is basically start forming networks with skills and so 
go to them, ask how they do things, and then they share their skills. And then the second thing that I wanted to say is, uh, as British Council and Doyle were trained quite a number of teachers there in the Soto. And I think that question is, uh, is saying to those who have been trained by the British Council, start forming community of practices with other schools and share the knowledge that you have gained, like what is inclusive education, how can you improve access in your school and how do you engage your learners in your school. And if you do that, then it means that you will be assisting the other schools and other teachers and the learners in terms of ensuring that the well-being of learners is taken care of. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you, sis. As, as always, you are a, a voice of wisdom and experience. That's a, a really, really important point. And, and I think, even, you know, look, I'm in Wales. I'm thousands of miles from all of you guys. You know, distance isn't an issue now, even with Hub being in Marija, Maypolani's in Tabitseka. Through these networks now, we can share and we can pool ideas and we can bring um, resources, albeit digital, together, but then you don't need lots of things to be able to do this in a new way. Um, you just sometimes need that spark of an idea and some feedback from somebody else to say, yes, that's exactly what happened with my group. This is what I do now. And so you can learn together in that community of practice, which is wonderful. Um, I've got time. I've got two more hands up. Let me see if, if those guys are available. Mema Toby, did you have a question? Yes, me. Uh, firstly, I would like to say maybe I agree with me, me Tembi, that we should allow children uh, to be free to say what they want to say. But when come to to the family i want to know if may, may them be say maybe may them be if you mean that uh, those teachers should teach these uh, young kids to to listen from adult conversation is it what you are you you, you mean <laughs> it's only because if we can teach uh, or allow or, or just to tell those young kids that they should uh, listen to their adult conversation. I think, to my opinion, is not fair because <laughs> some they are laughing because, you know, sometimes that conversation is not meant for those young or to their level. So it's not good. So what can you say about it? I, I, I don't get you well. Really, really, I don't get you well. Thank you. Mate. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm not suggesting that uh, kids should listen to parents' conversation because, yes, yeah, sometimes the, the content is not meant for them, but it should be limited. For example, uh, boys now are crawl. They 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 always crawl like outside of the house. They just come come in the house when they gonna eat or bath or do something. So when they are grown up, badulabo di shopong, interact with the family. Then we start blaming them that they are not always at home. But that's how they grew up. They were always outside of the house. They were always told to go play with other boys. So I'm suggesting that uh, parents should try to build a relationship with their kids, have like family time, so that they can they can be able to know their kids better. Because sometimes um, teachers end up knowing the kids better than parents because they are the ones who have quality time with them. Uh, even for like younger kids, when their mothers will be like, can you sing for me the songs that you sang at school? She'll be like, no, I'll only sing for teacher because they value their teachers the most. 
because mm-hmm. they feel like they get more care from the teachers. But back at home, if we try to nurture the relationship with our par- with our kids, it's, it, it will help them. They will grow into the direction that we maybe desire. Because I for about well, by a strata, but I would say a strata. Then go to a mana, Serena, but never man no more, or by never who is taking strata, but who is like your own. Thank you, me. Thank you, me. I may, but Toby, that was a fantastic question, and I think. You know, it, it, we laugh because we agree with you. Things, things shouldn't always be shared with children, but you have to model that way of interacting to your children. And so if parents are shooing children out the door all the time, they can't see or understand the effectiveness of communication and the way in which um, behavior should be modeled as well as to, you know, how people should grow and particularly I think to me talking about boys in particular that is really really important because that's very much part of a conversation here in the UK about not perpetuating toxic masculinity where you've got men that are behaving in a way that is sexist and misogynist and how can they change that behavior if we're not modeling that from a young age so there's lots and lots of things we could talk about here I'm so happy that we're able to have this conversation um but we do need to move on I can see um Mokwena Lebakai has got your hand up and Matakani um can we come back to you guys towards the end as we have a little bit more time if that's okay I just want to move on to our next speaker and then we can open the floor up at the end so thank you Tembi so much I'm going to move on um please put anything else in the chat folks if you are going to forget your question or your point pop it in the chat for us and then I'm going to share my screen um and Tati Lebohang actually are you there let me just double check are you in let's see my god um, oh yeah, Tati Lebohang, shall I play your video and then you're available for q and I can see you're there. I hope your network is working. Okay, we'll go for the video first anyway, and then we'll see if he's available. Okay. We're going to come back to this one in a second. Okay. All right, so um, and for those of you that have been part of our group, you've seen the work that we did in the summer, um, and the summer, our summer, your winter holidays. Um, but we can hear from the creative de- director now of Vision Street about working with the young people on the radio shows that they did for Action for Heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I deem it indeed a great honor to be given this opportunity to speak before a cohort of such distinguished guests and in such a distinguished occasion. I am probably the most unprepared speaker of the day. I mean, I'm just a photographer. Um, I'm not much of a speaker. And uh, give thanks to Dylan Campbell with Mr. Tulink for giving me this opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the founder and creative director at Vision Street. We specialize in a number of set skills in visual communication in terms of design, photography, film, corporate production, radio and television production. And it was indeed a great honor to be given an opportunity to produce a radio show based on Action for Heroes book. Uh, adapted from My Hero Is You. Both the books, uh, My Hero Is You and, and Action For You, present an opportunity for children to learn the basics and facts about COVID-19 and how to stay safe and adhere to protocols of safety as set by all health organization in the schools, communities, home, and the playgrounds where the children usually spend most of their time at. Ladies and gentlemen, I must reiterate that I have, we, we have never worked with directly with kids before. We have had yes, a number of productions, but not managing the production of kids or an educational program with kids. 
And it was such a great honor and a great flight to cross with since we, we had to like embark on the research so that we learn exactly how can we work around the children, how can we disseminate information to the children because we are not teachers by profession, we are just content creators. But having to manage um, the production surrounded with kids, we had to make this research involving psychologists to train us on the best ways and best practices and strategies to implement so that we can have a role bond with kids that they will understand the message we are delivering to them. And we've had the strategies that um, in as much as COVID-19 as serious as it is, we have to deliver these messages in a style and language understood by kids to them because they were the target audience. Because we believe in a way the kids as target audience that are going to listen to the show and learn from our kids will definitely listen to their peers as they speak on the radio and share the knowledge to other children. So ladies and gentlemen, this, this, this has been quite a great opportunity. You'll hear for yourselves as we play the video after this presentation where the kids share their information and their knowledge and their understanding after learning on how to take care of themselves and those that loved ones around the communities, homes and schools as an adaptation to COVID-19. Because we, we believe that kids may just be a minority of the total population of the world, but they guarantee 100% of the future of the global population. And it is of utmost importance to adhere to them and the safety of them and those loved ones around them during the COVID-19 era. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to play for you um, Action for Heroes film. It is a short video that captures the reflection of kids learning about COVID-19 and safety protocols during the production of the show, Action for Heroes. Shoya, <laughs> Kikokonasuko <laughs> Happy <laughs> Okay, Caleb and Tate, are you there now? Can you hear us? Hello, um, thank you so much. I can hear you. I hope my audio is very clear and you can all hear me. Yes, 
we can. That was wonderful. Thank you so much for your video. It's actually really good to see you in your environment. You look very much the film director, um, which I think is really key for people to understand again, you know, you're a young, successful creative, which is where we want our young people to be given opportunities as they're moving forward in, in their lives in Lesotho. And so they need role models. And this is where working with you has been very exciting for us because we're, we're able to, to advertise you and your skills, as well as just see these really, really quality outcomes, which has been fantastic. So um, I can see there's a hand up from maybe before. Um, is there anyone with a question for Lebohang from Vision Street? Um, any question about the radio shows? I'm just checking the screen then, Tate. This is where everyone's very quiet. Oh, we've got a round of applause from Vuyo. Um, Matakani, your hand up is from earlier. Do you have a question? I have a question. Oh, go Tembi, go. Okay, I'm asking Dadele Bohang, like, how was it as a director working with Cheese for the first time, like some of the challenges that he encountered? Well, thank you very much, Me. Um... I must say and lie, it was it was quite a, a nice ride while learning on how to work with kids, like I mentioned before. But it was very challenging because um, being the first time I'm working with kids, you get into a lot of trouble most of the times. Well, our in our first episodes, we didn't even have quite enough time for them to play uh, their fun games to. Uh, like feel that they are children because most of the times as directors we know we need to meet deadlines we need to deliver but at the same time we had to adhere to the kids as themselves to be safe and be in a safe environment so that they can share their experiences they can trust us that's why um we had to consult a, a number of um, at, at least one psychologist to advise us on how can how best can we work with our own kids so it was very challenging because sometimes we find children they be playing and they get minor injuries and cuts. <laughs> so we need to make sure that they, they are safe and they get the home safe. We make reports to say the children got into a, a mini play and they, they have a little cut so that the children themselves, they can be safe and the parents as well. But I must say it's, it was a nice experience. I would go back to the show if, if I had a chance to. It was nice. I learned a lot myself. Thank you. Thanks, Ndade. Do you, do you think it's a format that you think could work for other messaging, other things? So you've got that, that young voice, okay. like you said. Well, I believe in as much as our industry is uh, slowly growing, but there's a thing or two that we learn from, from, from those that have been through some, some experiences. Like I, for myself, I've had road models before. So growing in the industry helped me quite a lot so that we have ways of engaging with different kinds of productions. Because sometimes we go for a, a trauma productions for film itself. So working on the radio show itself as a learning platform for children, it was quite an, an exciting journey in a different part of a creative ex exercise and process. And I believe there is more than one way to win. And uh, it's when we collaborate with different skills that uh, if we have a mandate to reach certain goals, working together makes it a, a lot more easier to get there. Mm -hmm. And I'm very thankful for having this platform with teachers, I, I believe. Well, maybe in a day or two, I can be in front of the class of cheap <laughs> You might, <laughs> might be invited to Marija now to do some work. Um, no problem. <laughs> Tate Teboho, Tasani, you've got a question, Tate? Do you want to unmute Tate Teboho? Oh, there might be a delay. I know he's in. Oh, there we go. And Tate, do you have a question? 
not necessarily a question, madam. It is just a compliment. Okay, go. Young and energetic people working with kids. You know, they normally believe in young people as well, so that they, they adapt or take examples of their future. This is just a compliment to them. Thank you, Melinda, about that. You are growing and you're also going to influence our kids to, to be strong and independent. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ntate. And this is something you, actually myself and Ntate Debo who have talked about prior to this event where mm -hmm. he's worked with school council and he's he gets people to come into the, his high school in, in Kuting to, you know, those outside resource people are so important. You know, for those new voices, the teachers don't know everything. We can't know everything. Um, so having the new young generation of skills coming into schools or being provided as an opportunity to see in a virtual way or on radio, on TV, those things are so important. And it all comes back to this creativity. And that's what we're starting with our conference with as well, is really understanding that creative skills are really important here. So um, thank you so much, guys. Um, thank you. Thanks, Daddy. Just thank quickly see if there's any other questions there. Can't see any other hands up other than Matakani, but I think that's an old hand up, unless you have a question, mate. Hello, mate. Hi, mate. Hello. Oh, your your you voice is better help? now. Okay. No, mine is not a question. It was just a, a follow-up and a compliment as well that uh, because I've missed part of the, the discussions, but I noted a lot after Mayor Bulani's presentation and from my fellow colleague, the professional counselor. And I also wanted to highlight that as we work with the kids, especially teachers, it is important to take note of their multiple intelligences and also to guide them on their social connectedness, as it is one of the major factors determining how they grow up into being um, the responsible adults that we want them to be. So I was saying, since this is my first uh, uh, um, meeting with, with a group, I am more than willing to even share uh, some of the, 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 the information that I think might help a lot, especially with regard to uh, how the, the teachers can actually work around having their dream schools. And we also have uh, many tools under REPSI, which deal with, among other things, the, the, the social connectedness itself and how to mainstream the psychosocial support in the education system. So yeah, I just wanted to comment on that and, and say, well done, Bumelvon Daddy. You are doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And I know I can speak on behalf of everybody here that they'd really appreciate some more materials and expertise from you. And maybe that's something we can facilitate um, following on from this conference. Um, it, we, we use a platform called Padlet, which I know lots of you know about now, but all the radio shows from um, Vision Street are on a Padlet. So they are still, they can still be used. Yes, they were um, aired on Radio Lesotho due in August, but they still exist. So we've still got those really high quality episodes based on the healthy math messages that have come out of My Hero Is You. So I'll share that link with you all again. So again, they can still be used as rich resources for your learners. And we've got some, some great comments in the chat again, which is about bringing drama back into the classroom. Use these radio shows, use these storybooks to create more drama, use poems, anything. You've got so much access to information that doesn't need to be printed that you can still create good drama and creative responses from. So um, let's go away from, from this session inspired, hopefully, I'm sure you are. Um, one question before we move on, from Mema Toby for you and Tata Leboham was just about how you chose the, the, the learners. How did you get those learners involved? Well, it was, it was not, um, 
it was not a bad exercise or a, long, a lengthy exercise because we went to like before we 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 are pitched with the job this is what you need to do read the books formulate and uh, produce the visitor show provide a work plan that you're you'll be using to to have this radio show so after having the work plan and having the schedule we were then we then had to like find the learners as the actors themselves that are going to speak on behalf of other kids. So we went to a local school to find children with, with matching schedule. So we went to the principals, principal got us to the teachers, the teachers say, have these kids. It was just as simple as that. We never had a relationship with them as such, but we need, uh, we had a rehearsal before so that we make sure that all, all the kids that we were chosen um, we have one understanding, we build a relationship of trust and to build a family so that they can be all comfortable with the radio equipment, the cameras and studio and lightings and the familiarity of the program itself. So that is just about that. It was a random pickup. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that happens. Um, was it the, the lead, the lead um, actor in The Forgotten Kingdom? was quite a random pickup as well, I think, and he was amazing. Um, this, this does happen. Um, I'm just wondering if May Amelia is still on the call because she is our new project officer who, who, who wrote the scripts and did a lot of that work beforehand. Are you there, May? I'm, not, I'm just wondering, you might have fallen out. Apologies, everybody. You just see me looking around my screen. It looks a bit strange, but I'm just <laughs> checking names. <laughs> May Amelia, are you there? No, I think she's gone. Um, but we have the scripts, you know, did they change the, ch the children need to change the scripts at all in Tate? Not necessarily because um, we didn't hand out scripts for children because we want them, we wanted them to have their, to apply their minds. Mm. So after the, every, every section had a story, a story reading, book reading session. So after the, 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 the story section, they would then respond to questions coming forward from that. So we didn't really change the script, but, but we did at least change the format mm. of the original script so that it, it can match the radio style and, and broadcasting style. Mm. And doesn't sound so um, pre-created pre then as well. It's coming from them, which is good. Okay. All right, Caleb and that day, wonderful stuff. We've got lots of compliments in the chat there and compliment to the work at Repsi. I know we've got colleagues, May Lillian in Tabateca who have already done some of the courses with Repsi. So they feel the skills have made them new teachers, which is wonderful. Okay, we're coming to the end guys. I'm just gonna share a few things with you from my slides. And then if we have time, we can do some more questions. I've skipped past two little films, which um, is a bit of a shame, but we might, we might be able to share them. If not, I will make sure that they are on the Padlet. So this is an example of one Padlet for those of you that don't know about this as a platform. So it's a free app that you can download. And then when you're sent a link, you can like it and then it stays on your app. You don't have to download anything, but it um, is a good filing system for you to keep hold of materials. So all the episodes are on there and I will share that, that link with you. Um, I've got some more successes that I'd like to share. This is bringing us back to our learner voice and creativity, something that came out of our last bit of work um, before the winter holidays was about let's share the creative work of our learners. So we had our first digital newsletter um, and this is one of the poems that was submitted. I'm hoping the sound is okay. The journey, a lure to the danger of people who love you out there, but a lure prevents shelter of pain, conserves people's insurance, and sure to do no new damage. A lure intimidates, but yet is not peace. A lure pushes you to come through. A lure is a person who is more than you have reached because of the person who is down to the extent. 
Um, it's a bit quiet, guys. I'm just going to play this one too, but the, the poems are actually on the, the slide as well. I'm meant to be someone who cares about others, who always makes good things to people. You can be a hero to your friends. Tabo is a hero because he always takes good care of everyone, of everyone around him and also wants everyone to be a hero like him. One day, one of Tabo's friends got into trouble and he remembered that Tabo always tells him to do something good in his life. Hero is the unifier. A hero, a hero forms a bond with his or her colleagues. A hero comes within a person's a hero comes within a person's intellectual capability. A hero sees a solution to every problem. A hero is me. I'm not sure if um, Mpina was convinced at that point. He was happy to disappear off the, off, the, off the screen. But, you know, wonderful, easy ways to celebrate such creative writing. Um, so we are going to have a, another challenge. So please take note. If you're not in our wellbeing WhatsApp group, please join so that you can um, set the new challenge for your learners um, and there is a new book so there is my hero is you 2021 um, I just want to quickly check if Mayor Amelia has come back in because she was going to say a few words here are you there Mayor? I'm not sure I didn't see her on the list there but we've already set this challenge and we're going to do a new digital newsletter at the end of the month um, and what happens next? So if your students did read My Hero Is You or listened to the audio shows, um, what happens? What, what did Ario do? What did Sarah do? What would they do if they come to your school? So let your students have that free kind of creative response before you read the next book. Um, the next book is about coping and about resilience and the next stage of the story of all our lives living with COVID. Um, at the moment, we only have the PDFs, um, but we're hoping to get some money to translate again into Susutu um, and potentially print some copies again. But the fact that you've got the PDF copy on your phone means that you can still share that with your class. But see if they can do some creative work beforehand, send that in to us and we can make that digital um, newsletter again. Okay. Last bit then is just a reminder of the main Padlet. Again, I'll share these links with everybody so they've got them. So that everything today is on the supporting wellbeing Padlet that we set up in our first conference. Um, we've got lots and lots more stuff on our YouTube link as well. And <laughs> our obligatory survey is really important to do before anybody um, knocks off today. If you can fill in the survey today, that will make things a lot better for me. And that's just a very quick reflection on this afternoon's event. Um, from my perspective, just to draw things to a close, um, you know, this couldn't have gone any better. I've, um, I've learned a whole host of information from you guys, I am sure. Um, all of you would agree with that. We have some very definitive themes that have been coming through, very much about learner leadership, professional networks, collaborating, allowing space for creativity, allowing space for that learner voice, um, and helping them with their transitions and building that transition into early school experience. Don't wait until they leave at grade seven. They need to be used to changing and understanding how behavior changes and how they can build their resilient skills. So, you know, I hope you agree with me that we've had a fantastic um, set of speakers here that you can go back to the recording and go through if you need to, but I can all, I'll also send the slide to you. Um, and on the survey, there is an opportunity for ideas. So if we can apply for some more money, what 
can we do next? What can we do as part of this wellbeing project? And so we would love to get some feedback on that. Um, but I think what we need to do is unmute or at least put your cameras on and give everybody a massive round of applause because um, it's been a very, very successful two hours as, as it was last time. Well done, everybody. And thank you for your contributions. Thank you. Thank you for thank you. all the speakers. Thank you. And the thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, thank man. You so much. Thank, you. thank you. Well done. Well done. Well done. So we've, got, we've got voices from all over here. We're up in the mountain, we're in South Africa, we're in Wales. It's wonderful. And you know, I do like to, at the end, guys, take a photo. So if you do want to knock your video on, I can take some beautiful pictures. Everyone has to check their hair now, including yeah. you, Paul. <laughs> but please, if you have a question as well, be feel free to ask a question also. Okay, wonderful. I can see everybody at the Hub Marita there. Hello, everybody. We've got lots of people in the room. Wonderful. Right, a few more cameras. Me Lillian, me Janky. Hello. Let's pop our cameras on and we can get some pictures. Wonderful. Okay, after three, we'll do one and then I'll need to do one on the other screen as well. Okay, after three, one, two, three. Le shilly shilly. Le shilly shilly. Excellent, just bear with me. I'm going to paste that one. <laughs> and I'm going to do one on the other screen as well. Let's go to the other screen. Okay, we got more faces there. Matakani, you're there too. Wonderful. And Tati Okay, we'll do another one now. Okay, after three, one, two, three. The shilly shilly. Wonderful. I know I sound very silly doing that, folks, but it makes everyone laugh at the end. And <laughs> having these photos are really nice little moments for us and our memories because it's been an excellent session. And thank you for joining everybody. Um, thank you. If you do want to stay on and ask any questions, Bye. you can. Um, but feel free to knock off now and save your data. Yeah. And I'll follow up with the link after today's yeah. session. So well done and thank you for joining. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks for helping host Paul and Mandy. That was a last minute request, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> that was fab. That worked really well. Tembi, thank you so much. And Herb, that was wonderful. <laughs> thank you so much, Michelle. We will be having another conversation, I think, May.